All right, guys, we're going to welcome back to the Everything Cultural Podcast. Today, me and Nick are in 2024. Preview and prediction for the Stanford Cardinal. One of his coaching staff, Troy Taylor. 33-17 head coach record in four years. Second year at Stanford. Bobby April the is the defensive coordinator. Second year in his role as well. Five years as the linebacker coach at Wisconsin before that. Three straight three and nine seasons for the Cardinal. Look at this offense. You know, it was a pretty abysmal unit last season. You know, the run game is incredibly vital to what Taylor is trying to execute on offense. And they just weren't able to do that. 105th per game rushing, less than 21 points per contest. So it certainly was not all that great for Stanford for most of the year. Added nobody in the portal. They lost four guys. They returned nine starters, though. Start with the quarterback position. Ashton Daniels, the most skilled of the bunch at CM. Struggled with accuracy. Made some great throws at times during the season. Justin Lamson threw 88, pay, 88 passes, but was pretty awful. Was the team's leading rusher, though. They do have a top 200 recruit in quarterback Elijah Brown from modern day. Likely going to be the number two passer here. A guy that gives them probably the most upside. And, you know, we're going to touch on a lot of these positions where they're incredibly young across the board, Nick. Would it suit them best to go ahead and throw Brown as the starting quarterback? I think right now you can start Brown. I know just Brown has a lot of high upside coming out of modern day. And, and, you know, was a really highly sought after recruit when he was coming out of his high school process. Ended up picking Stanford, which some people, you know, was, thought was a bit of a shock. But I think this is a guy that, that wants the opportunity to play and develop his own sort of skill. And he picked Stanford in the end to do so. A high, highly ranked four star at 6'2", 205 out of high school, you know, from that Calif- from the state of California, looking to stay home and play in the state. I don't think you start him right away. I just think that's a recipe for disaster especially joining a new conference the uptick in you know in talent in this conference the acc that they're joining will make things a lot more difficult for this team i don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to play him early on i thought ashton daniels was a serviceable quarterback last year at times 55 58 percent comp rate 2200 yards passing 11 touchdowns eight picks not a bad quarterback at all you know for what they are at this moment in time i don't think you start brown you know day one that's just a recipe for disaster now, the two QBs that were here last year in Lampson and Daniels were the top two leading rushers. The run game is just a flat-out joke last season, to be quite frank. It's going to be true sophomore Cedric Irvin's backfield ripped off a 45-yard touchdown early in the season against Arizona. Barely played the rest of the year. 5'11", 225, Ryan Butler only saw a few touches during the season. Champ Hampton and Kanaj Washington will have a chance to earn reps. Uh, and then you look at you know the offensive line really needing to play better for us to get a great look at what this backfield can provide. Run game fell off many, many years ago. Uh, late in David Shaw's tenure, Nick, the run game was nowhere to be found, and it still isn't. Stanford is just abysmal in the trenches. And, you know, what do you expect from this backfield? Again, last year, didn't see much. They weren't good at all. You had two QBs averaging almost 30 yards per game each as the leading mark. Horrible stuff from Stanford. What can they accomplish in 24? They were unable to run the ball at all last year, and that was a huge problem for this team. You know, 105th in the nation with rush yards per game, below 120 yards per game. And the guys they returned really don't do a whole lot. Daniels had 292 yards rushing for 2.7 yards per carry and three scores. Just not good numbers at all. And then Lampson, the other quarterback, also had five rushing touchdowns. He had 2.8 yards per carry and 335. So not really a whole lot to even look at and say, hey, there's some positivity there. You know, when you look at Irvin, who's a young player, he's a true freshman last year, he had some decent runs like that run against Arizona you mentioned so he can kind of be a guy you look at maybe there's something you can see with him Ryan Butler has experience he's a junior has been around comfortable for a little bit but he only had 18 carries last year did not do a whole lot with those 18 carries this running back room is very weak very it seems you know it's very young outside of Butler who is a bit of a more experienced piece at this moment in time but again a guy that wasn't super productive he ended he was at Princeton originally and came out here out west and has not done a whole lot definitely worried about what the future of this running attack looks like for Stanford and then you look at the wide receiver group. This is pretty exciting. It starts with Alec Amanoer, who is an elite player as a true freshman. Great frame, has good physicality. He really uses strength to his favor. Good run after catch threat with speed at 6 2 2 10. Does a good job making catches that require tough adjustments as well. Obviously, this is the guy known for absolutely putting on a clinic against Travis Hunter. Had 294 yards and three touchdowns on 13 grabs in that big comeback win against Colorado. Had 146 on nine grabs in a closer game against Washington a few weeks later. And then he had a buck 22 and a blowout loss against Oregon State. But this is a guy that was producing frequently throughout the season. You look at the other guys who are going to join him. Emmett Mosley, he's a true freshman. He's going to get the full go. Missed his final year of high school, though, so there's certainly some concern there. Tiger Bachmir, he was good as the second leading pass catcher during his true freshman season. I like what they have at tight end. And Sam Roush, a pretty respectable player. Good pass bonker. Struggled on the ground, though. You also have Bryce Farrell, Madea Rubin, and Jason Raines, who were all on the roster last year, combining for 40 receptions. 
But the younger players here are going to be the starters, Nick. And I kind of like the upside Stanford has at these positions. They're not exactly, you know, deep with depth or anything like that. But you have young guys here who can really full, you know, mold a foundation for this program, including Am Anor, if he decides to stick around, which I think many anticipate at this moment in time he likely will. Am Anor is an incredible player who was, you know, top player on this team last year. A really fun player to watch on offense that has a lot of talent in his ability. A thousand yards receiving, sixteen point three yards to grab, and six touchdowns by and far by by and away the most targeted player on this roster last year nearly double the targets of the next higher player behind him so obviously they like what he has and i think he's a really excited piece that they return there at that wide receiver x position really strong young player you know tiger bachmeyer as well as a good player 409 yards receiving 11.4 yards for grab and two scores sam roush a, a prototypical tight end really good at blocking solid and pass block really good as a pass catcher as well with 28 grabs for 288 yards not really a red zone threat doesn't really have a whole lot of yards after catch but he is a good you know middle middle of the field kind of target there for small yardage uh, Mattel Rubin as well in the 199 yards receiving 13.3 yards for grab and Bryce Farrell had 192 yards receiving and a touchdown last year plus they bring in Emmett Mosley who could be really strong for this team he's a really good player that they recruited out of high school that they're excited about wasn't very healthy towards the end of his high school career didn't play a whole lot so you have questions about what he's going to look like you know, jumping into college football immediately at that wide receiver Z position. But this is a very strong wide receiving unit plus the tight ends. I think it's the best part of this team for sure. And a very exciting thing to watch if you're a Stanford fan. Look at the Cardinal offensive line. It was one of the nation's worst a season ago. Left tackle was a revolving door. Three different guys helped allow nine sacks collectively. Luke Malenko played the most of all of them as a true freshman. He's going to be the starter once again this year. Trevor Maybear at left guard didn't allow a sack, but allowed plenty of pressure. Levi Rogers was pretty good at center, at least in pass pro. Certainly struggled alongside the rest of this unit to generate a push. Simone Powell was horned at right guard. He was also a true freshman, though. Carter McLaughlin was a good player at right tackle as a run blocker. Did have his own struggles of pass protection. Overall, was relatively a young offensive line, so I think they will improve. Overall, they'll probably still be bad. This is another part of the program with David Shaw for many years. They were great up front, Nick, and then all of a sudden they just stopped being able to develop these guys. And, man, they took a big dive for the worst, and they haven't been able to recover. This is an offensive line that was absolutely horrendous last year. A young unit, which I think is the one thing if you want to get a lot, like a lot of things with this team, very young, so there is some experience that could be gained over time. But this is not a good unit at all. I don't have a lot of high hopes for these guys. A revolving door at left tackle. What are they going to look like there this year? You know, is, is Bakanenko going to be better as, as a true sophomore? Does he have the opportunity to step up? Is Trevor Mayberry going to be better at left guard? I don't really know. Levi Rogers at center. He's probably your best player on this team, a good veteran leader. But overall, this is a very weak offensive line the right guard is not great at all either right tackle is not great either Connor McLaughlin you know he's also a guy with some more experience this is a very bad unit they're very weak in the trenches especially in the offensive line now you look at the offensive verdict for the Cardinal it was a young unit last season but even with experience they struggled for years under Shaw Taylor is a good offensive coach and they'll improve across the board but if they can't run the ball they won't be able to accomplish much but the young guys a wide receiver are encouraging to monitor marginal improvements will be back um, or they'll be the back end of the conference in terms of offense, that is. But I do think they'll improve marginally. Look at the defensive side of the ball. You know, they also just kind of fell off a cliff. You know, you see a lot of 130 seconds and thirds and whatnot. This is a team that's just been awful on defense. Added three guys on the portal, lost nine. They do get back seven starters. Same old different year. This this offensive line or this defensive line that is Nick. You know, Clay Patterson, a nice add from EO. Only 6'3", 267, though. May need him at nose tackle. Veteran Tobin Phillips at 6'3", 295, struggled versus the run. You have Anthony Franklin and Zach Buckley. Both saw extensive action last year. They're both undersized, though, at 280 and 260, respectively. Zach Rowell will likely see more time, also only 281 pounds. Edge Department has a stud that we called since before he arrived in campus, David Bailey. We figured this guy would have to get involved immensely early on, and he has. One of the better outside linebackers in college football. Great pass rusher, but will need to be better versus the run. Tavara Tafadi. It was about average, but it was his first time on the field in his second year. Nice duo here, I think, in Tafati and Bailey. Uh, Ernest Cooper, they're hoping, can have some better production as a former four-star recruit who enters his third year in the program. Wilfredo Abar wasn't that bad of a run defender and is destined to see the field. And again, Nick, you know, we've said it, it seems like we keep mentioning the same guys year after year, where they're no good up front because they lack size and skill. Edge has some upside this year, but on the interior, they're just not there. It's the same player as I remember talking about two years ago, and they just have not gotten better ceiling doesn't seem to be that great for this run defense the ceiling is not great for this run defense at all and this is a unit that seems to not be able to figure out at all they were 94th in the nation against the run last year which was their best metric 
on, on defense, which is kind of crazy to think about that, considering that there's not a whole lot of upside here. The two edge rushers, I do think, are two players you want to highlight if you are looking for bright spots on this defense. I do think you look at the right and left side with David Bailey and Tervena Tafati. I think Tafati's a really strong, nice run defender and a good player in the backfield. 46 total tackles, 4.5 tackles for loss, 2.5 sacks for him. Solid numbers, David Bailey, 34 total tackles. Six tackles for loss, five sacks for him. I think those are solid numbers, right? Those are not bad at all. I think Anthony Franklin has some room to grow. 29 total tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, three sacks for him. On that defensive line, you're going to plug him in there at defensive tackle. He has some room to potentially grow. Wilford Ibar, 26 total tackles, two tackles for loss, one sack for him. Not incredible numbers at all. Uh, Tobin Phillips didn't do a whole lot in his couple of years here at the program. Now 14 total tackles for him, plus two tackles for loss last year. And Ernest Cooper, he was a guy that they plugged in early on because he's a young player. Player. We want to see what they can do with him. Five total tackles last year. Rotational pieces. They added Clay Pat, uh, Patterson, who could be a decent add. He comes over from Yale to jump up in competition. It will be tough for him, though. This defensive line has some good edge pieces, but I worry about the interior, and I worry about the depth, certainly. And David Bailey, obviously a guy that could certainly go anywhere in the country, I think, as a transfer entering his third year on the program. I think he's just going to wait to get that coveted Stanford degree before he does that, Nick. So they certainly have a, that piece there that can continue to develop and hopefully mold into a superstar who I don't think will dip because of that specific reason. I think yeah, David Bailey is a fantastic player who's looking to get that degree like you alluded to. And I, I, Like I said, Bailey had a decent season last year with 34 total tackles, six tackles for loss, which led the team in tackles for loss, and five sacks, which was also leading the team in that number. So he is a really strong player. Then get in the backfield, and as long as he wants to stick it out here, I think they're going to be better on that edge there. Look at the middle of this defense. They get back both starting linebackers, Tristan Sinclair, a veteran. He's going to be the middle linebacker. Well, overall, is just a poor player. Missed a ton of tackles. There's no good in coverage either. Gaithan Bernal was much more efficient as a tackler. Overall, a more consistent player, but was also horrid in coverage himself. Matt Rose played about 100 snaps, hoping to see some strong play from him. Josiah Galvin, who was a good impact performer from Northern Iowa, is a guy they're also anticipating to be a nice contributor this season. The room has good experience, but again, Nick, the skill just doesn't seem to be up to par, but I think the middle of this defense is a spot where you can be a little bit comfortable at because you can only, I mean, you can't get much worse than these guys were last year in terms of consistency. So I think they'll be somewhat better, and they'll certainly be beneficial. So Bernal and Sin Sinclair are the top two returning tacklers for this team, with Bernal having 87 total tackles plus four tackles for loss. Sinclair had 71 total tackles and five tackles for loss, but those numbers are deceiving. Both of them missed a lot of tackles, were very weak in coverage. So yes, it's nice to return that experience and those tackles, but these guys were horrible coverage assets. They missed a lot of tackles, were not very productive in the backfield. So you really wonder if they can take that step forward. So yes, it's great to return those tackling numbers. I do love when team return, teams return a nice amount of tackles, but when you look at the actual film on these guys, it's not very good. They're very weak in coverage, and I really want to see if they can take that step forward this year. Now you look at the secondary that helped rank dead last in college football in pass defense. I mean, they're no good. Almost 300 yards per contest. A loud starting CB Cullen, right? was the best player for this team. You know, being consistent in coverage, real stout player versus the run. Certainly an asset there as a run. Manley, on the other hand, was awful in more snaps in his starting role. Cam Richardson as a freshman should push him for playing time. Aaron Morris will also be pushing for snaps. Barely seeing any as a redshirt freshman last fall. Um, Scotty Edwards was a pretty admirable performer at his safety spot. Good versus the run. Led the team with only two interceptions. Mitch Ligbar was about average in his first season as a starter. Uh, you have Jay Green transferring in from Washington but was no good. For the Huskies, uh, Jashon Frasto Ramos was starting slot. Wasn't all that impressive. He's going to return to his post though with Amari Porter playing backup and being able to play most spots in the secondary. So, you know, another part of the team where you, you have experience, Nick, you can certainly be you know, hopeful on, but a lot has to improve because they were no good against the, the pass last year. They didn't seem to do much of anything right. Uh, gave up a ton of yards, and this is a team that really didn't seem to force many turnovers as well. Eight interceptions is an all right mark, but in terms of production from the secondary you can count on, it just was missing. You know, almost 300 yards per game given up through the air last year, 133rd in the nation, dead last. Gave a ton of yards per game as well, and a lot of that relies on the secondary that was getting torched over and over again. Colin Wright is a great player on this defense. I do look forward to watching him this year. 61 total tackles, five tackles for loss, interception, and five pass breakups for Wright this uh, past season. Mitch Le Leibar as well was a decent piece, 53 total tackles, two each in terms of tackles for loss and sacks. He had a pass breakup. Scotty Edwards had 45 total tackles, two picks, and a pass breakup for him, while Zion and Manley as well had 30 total tackles, two interceptions, and five pass breakups. Look for him to be a better co coverage asset this year. He's a graduate senior playing at the right cornerback position. Zach Buckley had seven total tackles plus a 
pass breakup last year. Aaron Morris contributed a little bit as did Deshaun Furzo Ramos, who had 18 total tackles. But this is a weak unit, a very uh, unit that's you know getting better as time goes on. I think I mean, they will show improvements this year. Obviously, the, the you know they're at the bottom of the floor, so they can only get better from here. I don't think they can get worse. You know, knock on wood, I don't think they can get worse. I don't think that's possible at this moment in time. There are some better pieces here that are going to get more experience. I think Wright's a good player to watch, certainly. I think Edwards is not bad either. I think Manley has some good experience in this game. Hopefully, they can only go up from here. Looking at the verdict for the defensive side of the ball, the Cardinal D gets back plenty of reps from a season ago, but outside of the outside linebacking group and a few guys in the secondary, this is overall just an unimpressive group. Still act size and prowess versus the run. Playmaking isn't ideal. Even though they should improve because of experience, I really don't think they do all that well. The pass rush should keep marching forward, though, and could certainly help the secondary out. I think they, you know, they had 23 sacks last year. They could certainly push, you know, 28 30. I think it's certainly reasonable. Um, look at the final prediction for Stanford. Usually, when you return a bunch of starters, that's exciting for what you can accomplish the next season, but in Stanford's case, I just don't share that same sentiment. This team is just awful in the trenches. That's why Shaw struggled so much in the back half of his tenure before bolting. Despite all those guys coming back, they still aren't all that good. I think the passing attack has some excitement, though, and it can play with. They can certainly, uh, you know, play with some intensity. And again, the outside linebacker group is solid, but the switching conference is not going to be kind for them one bit. Open the year at home against TCU is a line that continues to get smaller and smaller. Um, and certainly, maybe their offense can click against the Horned Frogs, but. Dead last against the pass last year, Nick. Now you face Josh Hoover, Sonny Dykes, and all those wide receivers. It's likely not to be pretty. San Jose State on the road might not even be a guaranteed win. And I think they'll catch Wake Forest sleep on October 26th. Other than that, though, it's hard to pinpoint wins here because this is a very difficult schedule. And I don't even know if Cal Poly's a free win. I'm not sure how good they are, but they lost to Sacramento State last year. Taylor's old school, that is the mention, and um, that was pretty much it. Three wins there. This would be the fourth straight three and nine season, Nick, which I think is would be crazy to happen, but we're going to predict it anyways. It's not a good schedule here at all. A very tough schedule, a lot of tough draws. I mean, that back-to-back -back traveling to the East Coast to play Syracuse and Clemson is absolutely brutal. They got to play Virginia Tech, who's going to be really good this year. They got to play Notre Dame in their, at, in their annual rivalry game, although they have caught Notre Dame sleeping a few times in the past you know, 10, 15 years, so that's something you can always keep an eye on, although I think Notre Dame will win that one easily. TCU at a conference is a tough play as well. SMU, fellow newcomers who are going to be very strong. And then Cal, a rivalry game, you know, forgotten rivalry in the sport of college football actually which is kind of funny that their head coach, Troy, uh, Troy Taylor, ta uh, went to Cal, and now he's coaching at Stanford. I kind of find that interesting, but I do think Cal will be able to beat them. You know, San Jose State, they could potentially catch them sleeping at the end of the season as well. Louisville, NC State, you know, tough draws too. I think they'll beat Wake Forest. They're not very high on Wake Forest. I think Wake Forest is a very weak team this year as well. There are some solid pieces here. I think there are some guys you do want to watch, specifically on the defensive side of the ball. I think you do want to keep an eye on Colin Wright. Look at David Bailey and then Tiafi as well coming off the edge. I do think there's some pieces on offense that have something to keep an eye on. Like that wide receiving room does have some fun players if you want to check them out but this is a stanford team that's looking for a very deep rebuild for troy taylor and company looks very grim as entering to step up a competition it's tough when you're a school that has such high academic standards to bring in that type of talent i know they're kind of relaxing some of their standards for bringing in transfers but it's still gonna be a very high bar to get into this program it's tough to recruit when you have that high of a standard i think that just because of those factors, Stanford joining a new conference, all those factors combined, I think Stanford's just going to be left behind in the grand scheme of college football. It's going to be tough to see this program get to the levels they had in the past. You, know, you look at September 20th and 28th, the two road trips they have there, I mean, that's almost as far as you can get when it comes to traveling across country, Nick, without going to Hawaii. They do it back-to-back -back weeks. I mean, that's going to be an exhausting trip, especially with Clemson being the second part of that leg. It's extremely brutal. I mean, outside of going to Boston College, these are the two farthest places you could go. Certainly, Syracuse is very far from Stanford, California. It's tough to get to upstate New York, and it's tough to get to South Carolina from California as well. These are very tough draws, and I think this is something that, that wasn't really thought about when we were doing this conference realignment here, that what would the toll look like on players as seasons goes on? I know some people have made comments about it, but I don't think it was talked about enough that the toll that the players have going on these super long road trips is going to take on them academically and just in their personal lives as well i'm very interested to see how it shakes out over the next couple of years because these are very tough road trips the stanford team has to take this year great for today's episode as always nick appreciate joining we're breaking down the cardinal in store for another disappointing season feel bad to, you know to rag on a team so i do think they're a fun team to watch they've had some successes in the past playing in those big bcs bowls under jim harbaugh with andrew luck that was a fun team to watch but that's a very long time ago and this team looks in the depths of a very deep rebuild make sure you guys like comment subscribe see you next time